Listen carefully. What can you hear? A bird? Maybe some insects? Perhaps even a gibbon in the distance. I'm in Borneo, a treasure trove of nature, where I'm learning that measuring biodiversity is about much more than what you can see. Currently, uh, measuring and disclosing data around biodiversity is still something that is very difficult. Biodiversity is simply the variety of all the life we have on Earth. So for any particular area, it is what is all the creatures that live, animals, plants, insects, funguses. Solving the biodiversity challenge will be the largest investment megatrend in our lifetime. The data we have available to us now around biodiversity is, is insufficient to be able to estimate the risks we're taking within our portfolios. You know, you can't fix climate without fixing biodiversity because that's a big part of your solutions to sequestering carbon dioxide. And if you don't fix climate, the impact on biodiversity is the thing that's really going to matter because that's the piece which is existential. Biodiversity is increasingly an important um, topic of discussion for the companies I cover, especially when it comes to palm oil plantations. <laughs> Fidelity, along with three other investors, is sponsoring a pilot project led by a group of scientists to develop a new way to measure biodiversity. We are testing bioacoustics, combining sound recordings with artificial intelligence to give a reading of the biodiversity of a specific area. I've travelled to Borneo with two experts who are showing me three different sites they are studying. We track to each location and then set up the audio equipment. High frequency microphones, so we set up a tripod here. We have one on the bottom, we have one on the top, and we're facing them out. Mm -hmm. We're trying to sort of capture the forest. So we will just take a video here. We return the next day to check the equipment and see what we recorded. Firstly, a palm oil plantation where natural vegetation was stripped to make way for palms. A controlled plot of natural rainforest near the plantation. And a conservation area which has been set aside by the plantation company. Okay. It's fascinating to see how the researchers gather the data on the ground. Now they take it to Europe for the analysis. The idea of this is to get a better understanding of the data that they gathered while they were on the trip. We met Green Praxis, the team who are doing all of the data analysis. This is up at around I had no real sense of the volume and the complexity of trying to condense that data down into ultimately what we're trying to get as a single metric. So this is a spectrogram, and a spectrogram is a way to be able to look at audio data. Where so they've taken academic indexes that are already in existence and layered that on top of the sound recordings to really start to pick out information from those recordings. We can see very clear differences between a conservation and a production plot, as you said. So that's really, really promising in terms of taking this, this project to the next stage. Hi, Minlin. Hey, hi, Charlotte. How are you? Yeah, I'm very well, thanks. Um, it's great to see the, the results. And I think, you know, there are a few things that really stand out. Visually, you see straight from the spectrograms, there's a stark difference between the production plot and then the conservation plot. So what's very clear is that species richness and species abundance is far greater in the conservation and control plots. We actually do see a meaningful difference between the control plot and the conservation plot. And so it really highlights the importance of protecting land. It's really positive that we get data differences um, between these two plots, uh, which can help to further engage the companies uh, when it comes to their efforts around conservation. The financial community investors have a huge part to play. 
You know, if you think about what's genuinely going to move the needle globally, it typically it's either a regulatory change or it's how capital gets deployed globally. With more data, we will be able to invest in a way that we can contribute uh, faster to solving the biodiversity loss challenge. So if we can take that sort of assumption that nature is infinite, we can't possibly affect it. And if we can understand that it's not infinite, it's quite limited, and we can start to factor that into our investment decisions, then you might just nudge where the capital flows. And if at the margins you can generate the same return, but do it in a way that doesn't overconsume the Earth's natural resources, that can only be positive for biodiversity. And unless we do that, I don't think we'll solve the crisis.